we've been talking about the equation pretty much throughout the previous lessons, right? So this time we are going to be learning about the inequalities. First of all, we are going to be talking about the basic inequalities in terms of the meaning and what kind of symbols we are going to use and how to show them on the number lines. Then we will solve inequalities and we will deal with the compound inequalities as well. Then finally, we will learn how to graph inequalities. Now let's talk about the inequality. What is inequality? So it is a comparison between two values, numbers or expressions that are not equal. So simply it's about comparing the different values and expressions. Now we know about the symbols of the inequalities, right? So we are very familiar with it, but let's quickly recap them. Then first of all, you will remember the greedy crocodile open its mouth to the bigger number. So this one is the greater than, then next one is a less than, then this one is greater than or equal to, then the last one is less than or equal to. So we're going to make the inequality using these symbols. Have a look at this one using the less than symbol. Then our inequality here is x is less than 2. Then we will see how to show this on the number lines. So here always begins with your number. So we have a 2. Then now thinking about it, we're going to use the circles and arrows to show this inequality on the number line. So it begins with the circle. Then now thinking about it, number 2 is included in the x or not. So if it's not in the x, then we will use the open circles. And if it is included in the x, then we use the closed circles. This time we have a less than, that's why we use the open circle. Then now let's decide the, the direction. So using arrows, it goes left side or right side. Since it's less than, look at the number lines, it goes off to the negative infinity, right? Then, now this is how to show the inequality on the number line. Uh, let's shade all the numbers. Then we can have another question there. What could be the largest integer? You know what is integer? Integer means the whole number, not the decimal, not the fraction, right? So let's find the biggest integer. So this number line goes goes off to the negative infinity. So we can't find the smallest number, right? So negative number is it begins with 2. But it can't be 2 because 2 is not included in the x. That's why next bigger integer is plus 1. That we have x is less than or equal to minus 1. So it begins with a minus 1, then draw the circle. Then now it's a bit different, right? So your circle will be closed or opened. So it's going to be closed circle since not minus 1 is included in the x, right? Then now decide the direction. Since it's less than, it goes to the left side and then all the numbers on the yellow section is the answer for this inequality. Then my question is, what is the largest integer? Then you can see this time starting by minus 1 and minus 1 is included. That's why our largest integer is minus 1. Now this time let's talk about the Compound inequality. So what's a compound inequality? So have a look at this one. Compound means you put things together, right? You can see we've got a one part of inequality that is x is greater than minus 7. Then another part of the inequality that is x is greater than 0. And then these inequalities are connected by the word n. So compound inequality has got two types. One is using word and the other one is using word or. So the compound interest using word and is called the conjunction. And this is a conjunction type. Then let's see how to solve our compound inequality conjunction type. So let's see. So first of all, let's just show the first inequality on the number line. That x begins with the minus 7. Then open circle. Then x is greater than. So go off to the infinity and then another inequality is starting by the zero 
and then open circle as well, then it goes off to the same direction. Now, let's have a look at our answers. So this compound inequality is a conjunction type, so that means so the answer for this inequality must be true for the first inequality at the same time true for the second inequality. So let's have a look at In that way, we need to chase the area for here. So this, the numbers in this area is true for the first inequality at the same time the second inequality. Let's try more. Let's have a look at more examples. So here, we've got a compound inequality, but we can't see the word and, but it's the same because look at this. If you cover the one side, you can see x is greater than minus 4. Then let's cover the other side as well. Then we can see another inequality that is x is less than or equal to 1. Let's show these compound inequalities on the number lines. Begin with the minus 4, then we can have an open circle, then the direction is to the positive side, to the right, then goes forever. Then the second inequality begins by 1, then now it's close 1 because you can see the equal to sign, then it goes off to the negative infinity, then let's find x that satisfy both inequalities. Let's see. Then we can clearly see that the middle section from minus 4 to 1, right? This is answer for these compound inequalities. Now, let's list the possible integers for, for x. So the x is begins with the minus 4, yeah? But Minus 4 is not included, that's why we need to write down the next integer, minus 3, then minus 2, minus 1, 0, and 1 is included, that's why up to 1. These 5 integers are the answer for this compound inequality. Now, next one, that we have a fraction in our inequality still. Since you've got a compound inequality, uh, try to cover one of the parts, then it can be easier, right? So the first part is x is greater than or equal to minus one half. And then let's cover the other part that we have x is less than or equal to three. So let's put them on the number line. Then begins with the minus half. So minus half is minus 1,5, right? So this number is a midway between minus 1 and minus 2. So let's put the circle here. It's minus 1,5. Then we will have an open or closed one. Definitely close circle, close one, since we can see the equal sign. Then now direction is a right side. Then now let's focus on the next inequality. X is less than or equal to 3, so it goes to the negative side, then the middle section that both inequalities can be true is the yellow part. Then let's find our integers. So all the x's uh, that is true for both equations will be minus 1.5 is not the integer because integer is a whole number, then since minus 1.5 is a decimal, right? So this is not a whole number, it's the in between the numbers. That's why minus 1.5 cannot be the answer. So we need to look for the next integer that is a minus 1, right? So it begins with the minus 1. Then 0, 1, 2, 3 is included, 3. So only these five integers can be the right answer. Now, let's move on to the next one that we can see another compound inequalities and this time it's a bit different because instead of the end word, we can see all, right? So this is called the disconjunctions. So, the so disconjunction is different from the conjunctions. So let's see how they're different. Let's find the first inequalities. That is a x is less than minus 1, then or x is greater or equal to 5. So let's put them on the number line. Begins with the minus 1 and then to the left side because it's less than, right? Then another inequality is x is bigger or equal to 5. So then these are the 
inequalities then? Can you see the same sections? No? Then how can we do it? So since we've got an or, that means as for the first inequality and as for the second inequality, both are fine. It's open to the both inequalities. Okay? So in other words, all the values for the either the first one or the second one can be the answer for these inequalities. Now let's move on to the solving inequalities. Inequalities is somewhat is very similar to the equations. As you can see here, this time you can see both part has got expressions, right? So now instead of equal sign, we've got a less than sign. Then what we can solve these inequalities? What I can suggest is when it comes to the equation, always solving equation means finding x, right? So solving inequality means finding all the possible x's. So now let's treat this as a same as a equation. So since you've got this inequality, then let's write down the equation as well. Then now just follow the same step with how you solve the equation. So look, so when you find the x, what we need to do is we isolate x, then x equal the value. That's how we do it, right? Now let's take away 2x to the both inequalities. So it can be 4x plus 1, then you've got only 11 left, right? The next thing we can do is we undo the plus 1. That means we need to take away 1 to both inequalities. Then now the first inequality we got a 4x, then the second part will be 11 minus 1 is 10. Now what we can do is we can uh, divide by 4. Then what we can get is an x is a less than, so what is 10 divided by 4? That is, say x is less than 2.5. Then let's have a look at this on the number line. So where is it 2.5? That's midway between the 2 and 3. Then draw the circle, open circle, then it goes left side since it's less than. Then this is the solution for the inequalities. So as I already told you that the solving e equation is finding x. Then since this is inequalities, your x is a loss of numbers, right? That you can see all of these numbers on the yellow section can be the true for these inequalities. Right, so let's move on to the next one. Then we've got uh, inequalities and then now it looks a bit tricky, but as always I said, just treat it as a equation. Then now look at the equation. How can you solve? So simply we can just expanding the bracket, right? So let's expand the bracket first. Then 6x minus 15 is less than equal to 21. Then now what we can do is undo the minus 15. So plus 15 to the both side, then 6x. Then 21 plus 15 is 36. Then what we can do is undo the times 6. That's divided by 6. Then we can have x only. Now x is less than or equal to 36 divided by 6, right? Then finally our answer is x is less than or equal to 6. This is solution for the inequalities. So now let's put them on the number line. So starting by the 6 and then have a closed circle. Then it goes to the left side since it's less than. Then all of the solutions you can see is the yellow part, right? Now finally, We've got word problems. As you can see, solving inequality is very similar to the equation, right? So now let's have a look at it. Here, Harry has got a three parcels. So the first parcel is very kind because it says you need to put the x as a first parcel is a x kilogram. The second one is a twice means times two, right? The so second parcel is a double x. Then your third parcel has got a 3 kilo less, that means your first parcel is x, then take away 3. Then now let's check our next information. Total is less than equal to, so 22 kilograms. So let's put the less than equal symbol. Then as this is a total, let's add all the expressions together. Then 
that is uh, x plus 2x, then x minus 3, that is less than or equal to 22. Now, finally, we can come up with our inequality, right? Then let's check our final goal. Then here it says the largest possible mass of the smallest possible. What does it mean? That means we need to find the largest possible x value. So now let's simplify this inequality first. As you can see, you can have a 4x minus 3 is less than or equal to 22. Then 4x is less than or equal to 25, right? So now we're looking for the value of x, so divide by 4, that x is finally, so let's divide 4 into the 25, that gives you, so your x value, the x is less than or equal to 6 point, that 1 quarter makes 0 0.25, so 6.25. So this is the final inequality, this is the final answer, right? So, x is less than or equal to 6.25. So now, to find the least possible mass, then we need to focus on the largest possible x that can be 6.25. Then let's go back to our parcels. Then let's see the weight. Our first parcel can be 6.25 kilogram. Then these are actually the largest possible weight, right? Then second parcel is a double X, so you double it, then you can say 12.5 kilogram. Then now third one, our final goal is taking away 3 from 6.25, that gives 3.25 kilogram. So now our final goal is the third parcel, that is 3.25 kilogram. This can be our answer. Okay, now this is the end of the first inequality lesson that we've been talking about the basics of inequality that we also draw the number line that we solve the inequalities as well. Next lesson, let's solve the compound inequalities and then find the solutions for that. Right, so see you next lesson. Bye-bye.